What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Chris Staples. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that like, subscribe. Really helps the channel grow. Today we got a special video. I'm going to tell you guys why I decided not to do Dunk League Season 3. Let's get into it. Alright, so let's get into why I didn't join Dunk League Season 3. Um, there are a lot of variables that go into it, a lot of different reasons. Um, I actually did want to be a part of it, but, you know, just, I would say politics. But, uh, to break it down, you know, first I would say, you know, it's four years later. You know, I, I won Dunk League Season 2 four years ago. It seems like yesterday, but it actually wasn't. Um, so, I had a lot more expectations going into season three, I'm like, all right, maybe they're going to, you know, change the rules a little bit. Maybe going they're going to up the purse price because it's four years later. But, you know, none of that happened. Actually, they actually decreased the show where instead of 10 players and 10 dunkers, it was eight dunkers this season. And, you know, and then it was the less amount, amount of money to win. I mean, you could still won $50,000, but... You know, the, the final, I think the final round is $20,000. So, you know, that's cool. Don't get me wrong. The money, money is money and it's good. But at the same time, I feel like with four years later for how much the show generated throughout the years, if we're still at the same amount of prize money and how much Duncan has elevated, I feel like, you know, the prize money should have been a lot higher. Um, for what they're going, how they're going to promote it, and, you know, and how many platforms this season is going to be, you know, how many platforms this this is going to be on. You know, it's going to be on Snapchat, it's going to be on the YouTube, it's going to be on Facebook, it's going to be on Instagram, and you know, through all these platforms, they generate a lot of money over the years. So, you know, Dunk League season one is still generating money. So I feel like as a dunker, you know, at the same time, we need to profit off that as well, and you know. I went into this season thinking of from a business standpoint, but that's all beside the point. You know, that's that's just one variable. Another variable would be I look at how season two ended and the the reasons, uh, the the way people will come, they'll come back. You know, like the people that will come back for the next season will be the guys who got second place, and I guess guys who got injured. So going into this season. You know, I would have expected Jay Clark to be there because he got second place in Dunk League Season 2. And Jordan Sutherland to be there for sure because he got hurt in Dunk League Season 2. So he never got an opportunity to perform. Um, or even Doug Anderson, he got hurt as well. And he he was probably in second place or third, second or first place in Dunk League Season 1, so Season 2. You know, it's a lot of stuff that didn't happen. You know, I felt like as a returning champ, you know, I would I would get some type of perk. You know, not just returning and not having to try out because this season they allowed whoever they chose versus who was actually maybe worthy of being there. And the way you became worthy was you have a tryout. You know, when I auditioned for a try for when I auditioned for Dunk League season two, I had to try out against Michael Purdy, Tyler Curry, Doug Anderson, Jared Ross, and. I Thomas, I forgot his last name, but these dudes were some phenomenal dunkers, and we all auditioned, and the top three got to go compete in season two, and that was probably the toughest audition of all. This year, no one, no one competed. I understand maybe because of we say COVID, and you know we had to rush the show, but I felt like it wasn't as genuine, and they just it was a, a, a political show. They just picked whoever you know they felt was better versus actually picking the guys who's actually better you know and it's no knock to anybody in the season but that's why I feel like a tryout is definitely something that needs to happen and so I didn't feel like I you know I didn't feel like I would gain anything by being on season two season three because I feel like I wouldn't gain anything by being on season three because you know I felt like I proved myself in season two and I gained nothing from that I don't look for handouts or anything like that but you're still gonna have a debate Whoever the best dunker in the world is, it's always going to be a debate. So it's always up for, you know, for discussion. 
you know. So I'd rather take my title and and live with it, you know. I would have also been one of the older guys on the show four years later. Now, if they had ran it back, you know, after I won season two, I would have been all for it. Like, let's go, let's do it again. But, you know, like I said, four years later. Even with all that, I still felt I wanted to be a part of the show because I didn't want a narrative to go around, like, where's Chris Staples? I want... So I asked the producers, I said, would you mind me judging the contest? Like, that way, I'm still there, still present, and I can give my take on the on judging because we always there's always this notion that people don't judge contests right and what is what is right i don't know but i think it's always great to have a a dunker who knows a lot about dunking on the judges panel in which this season they had my rebounding which is great and they had special effects and elevator great dunkers um but why not have a guy who was actually on the show as a judge so originally the producers were all for it they were all for me being a judge it made sense for them when i present the case and they were, they were with it they even sent me a contract signed ready sealed and delivered back to them then i get a call two days later saying hey we can't have you as a judge now this is what they told me i'm not sure if it's true or not but this is just what i was told some of the dunkers feel that you would be biased as a judge and they and they would boycott coming to the show coming on the dunk league season three if you were a judge that's what producers told me so for all you dunkers that always complain about judges didn't score the contest correctly i tried to be a judge i don't think i would have been biased i would have just gave my personal take on on a score i mean you end up bringing Remix, who is a dunker just like me. So I just don't understand what was the reason behind me not competing. I don't even understand why my rebounding isn't even competing. Just to let you guys know, after I won season two of Dunk League, the very next day I flew to, to LA and I lost to my rebounding in the dunk contest. Why hasn't my rebounding even competed one time in three seasons of Dunk League? I don't know. Um, so yeah, that, <laughs> it's just a lot of things that go into it, you know, and so I'm, I'm having these long conversations with, you know, with the producers or why, you know, and that was their take. They said, well, if you want to compete, you can compete, but you can't judge. So those, that was my only option was to compete. I chose not to compete because I felt like I have nothing to prove at this stage. And I was already feeling ambushed on like the decisions being made from other, they say other dunkers were making these decisions. So I'm like, I have no say so. And I, like I said, I won it. So I felt like I won the show. So I felt like I should have something to say. Then when I realized some of the competitions that were taken out of the show, such as the wall, you know, I, I succeeded pretty, I did pretty well on the wall jump. Uh, they took that out. They said, because players or dunkers, and I'm like, well, who's who are you? Who's calling to complain or make suggestions on the show and, and it actually get approved? Versus, I'm one of the guys too. Like, well, do I have a say so? Who you guys are talking to a lot of dunkers before ha having a conversation with me? I'm one of the guys too. So, you know, I just it didn't it didn't feel genuine. You know, something in my gut was telling me not to do it. I also asked. I'm like, you know, I on Dunk League season two, I did the most dunks actually because I actually I made it to the finals. And I was a part of two elimination rounds. So I felt like I, I had done the most dunks on that show. And so to come back again, I'm like, I'm probably going to do a lot of repeat dunks. You know, I, I'm not a guy who goes out there and just makes up dunks. I perfect dunks, but I'm not a guy who creates dunks. I was asking, hey, you know, is there an opportunity for me to bring a motorcycle or a bike or a car out? No, none of that will be possible. So what else do you want from me? You want me to just go out there and repeat dunks? I didn't feel like... I, there's no need for me to do that. So when you look at this season, the, the players, the dunkers that came back. So you have Jonathan Clark, you had CJ Champion, Anthony Hamilton, Tyler Curry, Dan Gross, Connor Barr, Isaiah Rivera, Jordan Sutherland. I think that's eight. Although amazing selections, I don't understand what's the criteria of bringing guys back. 
I can understand Jay Clark. I can understand Jordan Sutherland. No knock to anyone else that's gotten selected. They didn't earn that spot because, let's say, for example, CJ Champion, amazing dunker, he was third place. So why was he brought back? The second place person gets brought back. You have Isaiah Rivera, who did amazing this season. I, I don't want to make anyone think I'm, don't spam these guys' pages. Don't, I'm talking highly about them, but why was he brought back? Is it just because it's, you know, because he's popular? Because it's basically, it's a competition. Jordan Kilgannon. Again, amazing dunker. And he's doing very well this season. Why was he brought back? I don't know. He's actually never even tried out. He's just there. We all auditioned at some point to be on Dunk League. And he hasn't. I understand he's very popular. But it's a lot of it intangible them just bringing everyone back. So... I, I just don't understand what, what what do I gain out of this? You know, they didn't have Guy Dupuy or Doug Anderson this year. They probably have their reasons. But you have dunkers that probably should have been there. You have people like T Flying High, which is a young dunker, so underrated, can do every type of dunk, and he's not there. You have Tony Crosby, who's five seven, five six or something like that. He just won K-54 against Jay Clark, Isaiah Rivera, and Jordan Sutherland. He at least should be in that category of being on the show because he won a big contest against heavy hitter dunkers. So, you know, I felt like it was all p political at the end of the day, and I don't want to be a part of that. I want, I want a, a fair contest. Um, this contest wouldn't really be fair because that's who you want in the contest. I felt like it should be a trial at the end of the day, and it wasn't. It wasn't. So, yeah, man, I know that's a lot. It's, <laughs> it's a very long story. I definitely wanted to be a part of Dunk League Season 3. It just didn't work out. Um, one thing I would suggest to, to Whistle, if they decide to do it again in the future, um, to have auditions. Let everyone get a fair shot to see who's worthy of being on Dunk League Season 4. Um, maybe have a champions edition. So, who, you know, maybe the champions get to go or maybe we have a team. We have a team um, where maybe I get to pick a group of guys that are, I'm teamed up with and whoever wins Dunk League, whoever won Dunk League Season 3, they get to pick their squad. Maybe it'd be a five on five or something like that. I mean, I'm just trying to think of other suggestions because you're going to keep running into this uh, on this merry-go-round of dunk contest and everything becomes repetitive. So I would like guys to team up more um, just to change up the game a little bit, change up the competition. I appreciate you guys, man. You know, and I want to give a special shout out to all the dunkers, man. You know, we're all like uh, a fraternity. You know, it's only a certain amount of people that can do some of the unique dunks that we do. And so shout out to all you guys. All you guys are amazing. Um, but yeah, that's my story on why I didn't join Dunk League Season 3. If there's a Dunk League Season 4 in the future, I'm sure I will be a part of it, you know, um, if the opportunity presents itself. But I would like it to be fair at the end of the day. That's my story. I hope you guys like these videos. Um, not videos like this. This is going to be very, this is very rare. But thank you guys for watching. I'm Chris Staples. More videos coming your way soon. Make sure you guys check out Dunk League Season 3. Shout out to the winner. I have... I'm posting this video, but I don't know who won yet. So, um, thank you guys for watching.